the guru of travel writing, travel correspondent uh, at The Independent, uh, Simon Calder. Hello, Simon. Uh, Kevin, good morning from uh, a wet and miserable Newston station. The good news, if you want some, my friend, is that you can go anywhere you want to as long as it's Watford Junction. There are trains running on the London underground, uh, uh, overground this morning, as far as um, that beautiful Hertfordshire town. Um, but any further to Birmingham, to Manchester, to Liverpool, to Scotland, you're not going to be able to get here from uh, get get to uh, those places from here. Uh, very similar pack picture across the rest of England. And bear in mind that Transport for Wales and uh, ScotRail are not involved in this. Um, East Midlands Railway, they've got nothing going. Southeastern uh, Commuter Service for Kent. Um, Chiltern, uh, uh, sorry, the, the Northern and uh, West Midlands trains, nothing um, happening there. And actually, things are going to get a little bit better tomorrow. It sounds oh, really? wrong. I because, thought the RMT yeah. were coming in and would make things even worse. Ah, you would think that, and I can understand that. But let me tell you how it works. Um, as left, the train drivers union has the most industrial muscle, which is why the vast majority of services are being wiped out across England today. Um, by tomorrow, yes, they've got an overtime ban, but you're not really going to notice that too much because most train operators who are being hit by the RMT strike are running reduced services anyway. But there are going to be a lot more trains. It could be as many as half of the normal trains, which if you're a union and you're going on strike is a bit disappointing. Um, but you will be able, for example, to uh, on um, Greater Anglia, which runs from London Liverpool Street to Norwich to Ipswich to South End and to lovely Stansted Airport, there's going to be a pretty normal service. So um, the ASLEF strikes, and I've just in the past few minutes spoken to the uh, General Secretary, Mick Whelan, he says this is just going on for as long as it needs to go on for. Um, the RMT, I suspect, could be after some kind of um, uh, way out of this because ultimately they are um, uh, losing uh, a, a lot of money. They've been on strike more than twice as much as um, as left the uh, the train drivers union, and they don't seem to be getting very far. So um, there's talk in the industry of trying to find what's called an off ramp to allow them to uh, put a deal to members. At which point that bit might um, be all right. But frankly, for anybody like me who relies on the railways. Um, you can't plan anything more than two weeks ahead because you've got no idea who's going to call a strike next. Well, let's get to the nuts and bolts of what these disputes are all about in a little while. But basically, Simon, today is the advice to travellers, uh, you know, if you've got to get somewhere, uh, forget about the rail network. Could try, find uh, some alternative method. All depends where you're going. On what the, for junction, majority. obviously, you're OK. <laughs> no, OK, let me tell you where there are services running. So... Great Western region from from Cardiff from Bristol um, into London Paddington. There's a sort of skeleton service on there. LNER from down the road here. That's the East Coast Main Line. They will be going uh, fairly regularly um, between Edinburgh and London and between Leeds and London. Um, and if you're going to Gatwick Airport, trains every half hour from London Victoria. But apart from that, there's not really very much happening. Tomorrow there will be an awful lot more going on but it's still a very very messy situation all right simon i'm going to call upon your expertise uh here uh what are these strikes all about let's do as left first uh, these are basically the train drivers what do they want what are they demanding uh and what have they been offered uh and by extension what have they rejected OK, um, and the, actually both disputes, even though they're parallel, one with ASLEF, one with the RMT, they're basically about the same thing. The, they, the, the train drivers and the rest of the railway industry says many of us haven't had a pay increase since 2019. We want a decent pay rise that reflects the um, high inflation rate, and we'd like that. And then we can talk about so-called reforms, which they characterise as cuts, um, uh, but we're going to need some more money for those. The government, which actually is calling the shots because um, they are propping up the industry with uh, taxpayers' money, they say, you are joking. We cannot possibly afford to pay you even a modest increase unless that comes from uh, improved, more efficient working. And the two sides are as far apart as that. 
There haven't been any talks since April. No sign of any talks happening anytime soon. And uh, that's why the uh, travellers are just sort of losing interest. Yeah. Um, if you, you, lots of people heading on the roads, whether they're driving their cars, even though they'd rather not, getting long distance coaches, they're doing very well, or even flying. Can you believe I just checked uh, the first flight from Newcastle to London today, yeah. the cheapest fare on British Airways, £655 You're kidding. one way. You're kidding. No? That's ridiculous. Uh, but I suppose you have to make hay well the sun shines if you're in the air industry, which has its own problems. Uh, uh, these strikes seem to me, uh, Simon, to have been going on since about 1972. But uh, seriously, uh, how remind us, how long have they been going on? OK, well, the present round of uh, national rail strikes um, began on Midsummer's Day 2022. That was the RMT. It was the 30th of July last year that I first turned up here. It was a bit sunnier then uh, for the first ASLEF strike. And uh, since then, drivers on strike a dozen times, um, RMT union a couple of dozen times, and uh, without getting any closer to uh, anything like um, a resolution. The government also says, look, for goodness sake, put our pay offer, particularly the RMT, to your members and see what they think. The RMT says, well, bluntly behind the scenes, you're going to have to give us a little bit more so that we can, we can uh, recommend it to our staff. But uh, it's just a, a shambles for the rail industry. And also, there would be lots of people um, uh, watching at home, listening in their cars, thinking, hang on, I don't n ever go near a train. Um, how much am I going to pay for this? And I'm afraid the answer, ladies and gentlemen, is billions of pounds in your taxis. Uh, let's talk a little bit, uh, Simon. Uh, thank you for this excellent report right from the heart of the storm, the eye of the storm in a very empty Euston station. It uh, would be usually absolutely packed at this time as the rush hour begins to uh, unfold. Uh, but um, uh, tell us uh, where we're at in terms of any kind of solution to this and can we talk a little bit about that kind of, this kind of apathy that is now building up i mean what are the unions thinking there they are they love to stand on a picket out brothers out you know more money yeah, and all this but the public because we've had to get used to this i mean that's my big question do you care about the rail strikes anymore? That's the question to our uh, viewers and listeners we're asking today. And there is a lot of apathy. Are the, are the unions aware that basically we've come to the point where we're saying, stand on a picket line or don't? We just don't care anymore. They've lost a lot of leverage here, haven't they? Uh, they absolutely have, and that was uh, very well summed up, if I may, Kevin. Yeah, that, that the big difference is, and obviously you and your lovely viewers and listeners weren't around in the 1980s. I was, and I remember the Aslev strikes then when the train drivers went out. Whole country just ground to a halt. Gridlock in all the big towns and cities um, as people struggled to get to work. Um, that just doesn't happen anymore. Um, there's lots of people sitting at home watching with a nice cup of tea yeah. in Woking rather than commuting to Waterloo. Um, and therefore, the only target that the uh, rail unions have is for leisure travellers. Um, that's uh, people who were you know, thinking, OK, well, do I, I, I don't have to make this journey. Um, they're, they're thinking, I could do this by another form of transport. And it's really, really a perilous path that they are walking on because ultimately people are finding other solutions yeah. they're not economically dependent on getting a train and therefore they're kind of walking away the impact of the strikes is dissipating and i think actually the government um you know, the, the, the transport secretary rail minister are kind of thinking we think that that um, if we hold out eventually um, there we are. Um, eventually, um, you will get uh, enough people yeah. um, coming back to work. And uh, indeed, the RMT strikes, um, since on a normal RMT strike yeah. day, if there is such a thing, you're getting half the train services running. Um, it might well be that they are correct. But the train drivers, meanwhile, average um, £60,000 a year. Uh, they can hold out a bit longer. Yeah. I mean, it's not exactly a bullet to the government's head, is it, these uh, railway strikers saying, if you don't give us the money that we want, I'll tell you, we will make it very difficult for people to get to the Eurovision Song Contest. I mean, it, it's a bit like, who cares? Uh, well, yes. Oh, uh, well, e exactly. Actually, lots of people 
get it's, it's you know, clearly. Yeah, well, okay, sorry. Uh, my, I, I, I was very unfair to people uh, who uh, want no. to go to the Eurovision Song Contest there for re for reasons that escape me, but you know what I mean. They, 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 yeah. they don't really have the power. They don't have a bullet to the government's head because, as you say, all they can say is, oh, we'll make it difficult for people to get to uh, pop, you know, well, fun, rock fun festivals things. and get, things like that. Football matches, yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, so it, it's affecting young people trying to get to football matches, which is annoying, but ultimately, you know, they'll just say, okay, well, who's got a car? Let's all pile into that, and which is, um, as means more congestion on the roads. It means less money for the uh, uh, rail industry. And uh, yes, this is corrosive um, on confidence for passengers. I depend absolutely on the railways. I've got an important uh, meeting in Bristol on Monday. I booked my bus ticket three weeks ago right. because I know the, the long distance coach is going to be running. Very wise. Now, uh, just to f conclude, uh, thank you so much, Simon. Uh, I mean, w you alluded to it earlier, but is there even a scintilla of light at the end of the tunnel about all this? Is there any uh, common ground where both sides might possibly be able to reach some kind of compromise? And if so, what kind of time scale are we talking about? And I'm talking about, obviously, both unions, ASLEF and the RMT. OK, so here's how it's going to work out, I think. ASLEF are going to hold out for a lot longer, um, but they'll see what happens to the RMT. I think the RMT... Um, will be after tomorrow's strike. They will be assessing it. The um, government, the train operators, will be looking at how many people actually turned up for work, how effective would any future strike be, and let's um, try and, uh, get, you know, we, we'll put together a plan which is going to, we hope, going to uh, uh, improve things. Because we had a strike last Saturday, which was uh, damaging enough. We're going to have another one tomorrow for the RMT. But uh, they also, crucially, and I haven't seen Mick Lynch so far this morning, um, they also said, here's a, a roadmap for how we could move forward. So they're very keen to settle. Mick Whelan, train drivers union boss, no, he, he just says, oh, we're, gonna, we're, we're here. Um, but I've now got Kevin to go and get him a cup of coffee because I promised I would do if he gave me an interview. Uh, off you go then, and uh, let us know what he says maybe later <laughs> on. Uh, thanks very much, Simon. Always a pleasure, mate. Thank you very much.